so if you thought that was bad, um, I came across this document um, that was put out, I think, yesterday. Uh, I think it was a it was an update uh, to, to 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 a project, but it was put up. I think it was put up out yesterday uh, or this week, uh, and it's called uh, Absolute Zero. And, uh, and this is a climate change document by a group called UK Fires, uh, which is led by a, um, a engineering professor from the University of Cambridge. Uh, this group is supported by the University of Cambridge, but as, as part of this, it has a number of faculty members, uh, including from the University of Cambridge, Bath, Nottingham, Straith, Clyde, and the University of Oxford, as well as Imperial College. So some of the best universities in the world are participating in this, and and this is the this is the problem that they um, they're saying. Look, we've um, we have this clear mission of cutting uh, of achieving net zero emissions by twenty fifty. The whole world agrees with this. We have to get to net zero emissions by twenty fifty, and that's just twenty something years away, right? Twenty seven years away. And most of the focus on getting there is to try to come up with what are called breakthrough technologies, technologies that will allow us to maintain our quality of life, our standard of living, and still achieve net zero emissions. And, and what this document is saying is, look, that's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. There are no breakthrough technologies that can provide us with the energy we need and everything else that we need without us being willing to change our lifestyle. And look, you know, the world's going to end. We have to do things. Um, again, there's, there's somebody out there that needs to be sacrificed to. And, uh, and we, you know, scientists have identified this goal to save the world, zero emissions by 2050. And the reality is that, you know, uh, having faith in technology to deliver, uh, you know, uh, solutions to all the, the, the issues. It's just, it's fantasy. It's just not going to happen. And they're probably right. Um, and he says, look, for 20 years, we've been trying to solve the problems with new or breakthrough technologies. And I'm reading for this report, they, 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 from the executive summary of the report, uh, that supply energy and allow industry to keep growing so we don't have to change our lifestyles. So, so we're investing heavily in, in these technologies so we don't have to change our lifestyles. And, so they, and they say, but although some exciting new technology options are being delivered, developed, it will take a long time to deploy them, and they won't be operating at scale within 30 years. So what do we do? What do we do? Um, and what he says, what they... What the conclusion they come to is, look, if we're serious about zero emissions by 2050, then we're going to have to accept the fact that we have to change our lifestyle. Life is going to have to change on planet Earth. We can't continue living the way we do today uh, with zero emissions. Technology is not going to save us. It just won't happen. Um, so he says, if we really want to reach zero emissions in 30-year times, what does that involve? And they say, most of what we most enjoy, spending time together, notice, notice the orientation of what we most enjoy. Most of what we most enjoy, spending time together as families or communities, legions, sports, creativity, can continue and grow unhindered. I mean, we'll come back to this because that's just not true. But notice that that's what we care most about. It's not about careers. It's not about it's not about uh, wealth, God forbid. Um, it's about families and communities, leisure, sports, and creativity. What makes all of that possible? You know, work and industry and so on. Um, but that's what's inf that's what's important. Um, that already tells you something about the orientation of, of of this, and whether that can be preserved under the zero environment is, is bizarre. Uh, he says, uh, they continue writing, we need to switch to using electricity as our only form of energy. And if it continues today, impressive rate of growth in non-emitting generation, 
we'll only have to cut our use of energy to 60% of today's levels. <laughs> only. So, so we don't have to cut it to zero. Just all we have to do is eliminate 40% of the energy we use today and we can enjoy uh, and, and we can get to where we need to be and we can enjoy family and community and leisure and sports and creativity. At least, whoops, a mosquito. I'm trying to catch the mosquito. Um, he says, uh, they write, we can easily achieve this with incremental changes to the way we use energy. We can drive smaller cars and take the train when possible. Train is energy efficient, they tell us. Uh, use efficient electric heat pumps to keep warm and, and, and uh, buy buildings, vehicles, and equipment that are better designed and last much longer. Notice the we, we, we. Your individual preferences, by the way, don't actually matter. Nobody actually gives a damn about you. We are going to tell you what is important for you, family, and community, leisure, sports, and creativity. That's what's important for you. And we are going to determine for you what car you're going to drive. And we are going to determine for you how much electricity you're going to use. We know what the planet needs. And if you have to sacrifice a little bit, if we have to sacrifice you a little bit, so be it. No big deal. Don't get too excited. But they say we face two big challenges. The two big challenges we face with an electric future are flying and shipping. Although there are lots of new ideas about electric planes, they won't be operating at commercial scales within 30 years. So zero emissions means that for some period, we'll all stop using airplanes. I love the fact that they don't mince words here. They're not hedging. For some period of time, we'll all stop using airplanes. Can't go on that vacation to Rome, you're on. Nope, not gonna see the, not gonna see the Sistine Chapel ever again because you're stuck in America. You're just not gonna be able to fly anyway. And, and by the way, as somebody who lives in Puerto Rico, I am really stuck. I can't leave the island unless I swim or I guess I go a boat. We'll get to boats in a minute. No flying. Not, not some flying. Not we won't do any international flights. Not, no. We'll stop using airplanes. Shipping, they write, is more challenging. Although there are a few military ships run by nuclear reactors, we currently don't have any large electric merchant ships. But we depend strongly on shipping from importing food and goods. And they say, look, we have a, a climate change act. This is in the UK. So we have, to we have to obey the act. And that means that we have to stop doing anything that causes emissions regardless of its energy source. That's going to require, it's going to require that we stop eating beef and lamb. No more beef, no more lamb. Um, because they release methane as they digest grass. Um, so we're going to have to, people are going to have to switch to vegetarian diets. Or switch to, I guess, chickens. Although I'm sure there's something wrong with chickens. Um, and then one of the most difficult problems is cement. Making cement releases emissions regardless of how it's powered. There are currently no alternative options available at scale. And we don't know how to install new renewable or make new energy efficient buildings without it. So what are we going to do? Stop building? Yeah, stop building because we can't build without cement. They write, we need to discuss these challenges as a society. Making progress on climate change requires that the three key groups of players, government, business, and individuals, work together, together, rather than waiting for the other two to act first. But until we face up to the fact that breakthrough technologies won't arrive fast enough, we can't even begin having the right discussion. So, and, and then they, they give you the, the, the fairy tale stuff. Here's the fairy tale stuff. Um, committing to zero emissions create tremendous opportunity. Tremendous. There will be huge growth in the use and conversion of electricity for travel. Travel where? I can't, I mean, I can drive. Can't cross the Atlantic Ocean or Pacific Ocean with a car. What do the Japanese do? I guess they don't go anywhere. Um, conversion of electricity for travel, warmth, and 
in industry, growth in new zero emission diets. Wow, what a, I, I can't wait to get rid of lamb and beef so I can go on a zero emission diet. I've always wanted to be on a zero emission site. Wouldn't that sound so enticing? I, I just had a meal at a, at a Michelin star restaurant. I don't think it was zero emissions. Growth in materials production, manufacturing, construction capability with zero emissions, growth in leisure and domestic travel, growth in business that help us to use energy efficiently and conserve and value materials. Of course, they're ignoring in all of this. They're ignoring these in these opportunities um, the breakthrough technologies that they're assuming will happen. They're ignoring the cost. They're ignoring how poor we will become. They're ignoring the fact that these new sources of energy are primarily unreliable. They're ignoring just the, the, the sheer uh, insanity of the goal and what it's actually going to require of us. So, so they're honest when it comes to can't go boat, can't go fly. So no more global trade, no flying anywhere. They're honest about that, but they're not honest about all this, you know, uh, uh, bizarre. I mean, if, if zero emissions w were so economically great, you wouldn't have to subsidize them. You know, so um, absolute zero creates a driver for tremendous growth in industries related to electrification. True, but death in other industries, from material supply through generation and storage to end use. The fossil fuel, cement, shipping, and aviation industries face rapid contraction, while construction and many manufacturing sectors can continue at today's scale with appropriate transformations. How will the construction sector adapt? All new build should be zero energy standards of use. The impacts of construction are primarily about the use of materials, primarily steel and cement. By 2050, we will have only very limited cementious material and will use only recycled steel, only recycled steel. But there are myriad opportunities for radical reductions in the amount of materials used in each construction, really. No skyscrapers. Forget skyscrapers. Forget tall buildings generally. How are you gonna how are you gonna build bridges without steel? Recycled steel, right? There's not enough recycled steel to build new stuff. International freight, global trade, any kind of trade. We currently have no non emitting freight ships. So there is an urgent need for exploration of means to electrify ship power and options to transfer to electric rail. Electric rail from the UK to the United States. Mm. Um, this would require an enormous expansion in international rail cap capacity. Where's this money going to come from? Who's going to make these investments? And why is there no discussion here of the costs of all this? And the cost of standard living and quality of life, even if we have if we don't fly anyway. Global trade collapsing. Countries are gonna to have to become self-sufficient. We know the cost and standard of living and quality of life of that is massive. We know the benefits of trade. We know the benefits of specialization. I mean, what they're really asking here, and, and I mean, what they're really asking here is for the destruction of modern civilization and pretending that there are great opportunities here. Nobody's going to have to suffer. Oh, so you won't be able to fly. Big deal. Aviation, they say. There are no options for zero emission flights in the time, in the time available for action. So the industry faces a rapid contraction. That's interesting, rapid contraction. Developments in electric flight may be relevant beyond 2050. Fossil fuel industries, all coal, gas, and oil fuel supply from extraction through the supply chain to retail must close within 30 years, although carbon capture and storage may allow some activity later. Travel and tourism without flying. There will be growth in domestic and train reach tourism invasion. I mean, food and agriculture, beef and lamb phased out by 2050 and replaced by greatly expanded demand for vegetarian food. 
Electricity supply for food processing and storage will be cut by 50%. So we're gonna cut electricity for storing and for processing food by 50%, but we're gonna have enough food to feed everybody? Wee, wee, wee. It just goes on and on like this. And, and the beauty of a document like this is that it's right here, it's, it's, it's laid out. You know, it, it literally under the section of traveling, it will say, stop using airplanes. Take the train, not the car when possible. Use all the seats in the car or get a smaller car. Choose an electric car next time if possible, which will become easier as prices fall and charging infrastructure expands. Lobby for more trains, no new roads, airport closure, and more renewable electricity. I mean, again, this is the end. This agenda is an agenda for the end of humanity, the end of civilization, the end of economic progress, the end of economic wealth, the end of economic growth. You know, one of uh, the, some of the recommendations about heating and appliances, right? Wear warmer clothes in winter. Wear warmer clothes in winter. I mean, this is going backwards how many hundreds of years? And uh, it, it goes on. So this is, this is backed by University of Cambridge Engineering Department. They've got graphs. They've got pictures. They've got the whole thing. It's all worked out. They, they you know, it's truly unbelievable. Um, this is evil on a scale that is hard to imagine. The evasion of these people to pretend that there's opportunities here. There's opportunity for a much smaller population. Eight billion people can't survive on this and they know it. So this is, we're talking about maybe one billion, maybe 500 million people on planet Earth. Uh, Africa can't do this. They don't care. They, have, they just don't care. If not, the world will end. Well, maybe it's better that the world end, that we have to live like animals. This is the agenda of the environmentalist laid naked in front of us. This is what they're really after. The end of modern life, the end of civilized life as we know it. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.